This video is part of a mini-series about the UK's productivity puzzle. If you haven't already watched the first part, I'd recommend you check it out before watching this video. Okay, on with this video. This is the UK, and this is its productivity puzzle. As discussed previously, the contributing factors to the UK's productivity puzzle are numerous, with one of the major contributors being the diffusion of innovation, or the lack of. So, what do we mean when we talk about the diffusion of innovation? And what are some of the solutions that could help improve and solve the UK's kerfuffle? Welcome to the UK's Productivity Puzzle, Part 2. So, what do we mean when we talk about the diffusion of ideas and technologies within an economy? Surely, data on best practices and the appropriate technologies are not much further than a couple of Google searches away, right? Well, yes and no. So, first of all, let's state the basics. The diffusion of innovation is a core part of increasing productivity at a national level. This is backed up by research of the OECD and the Bank of England. A country that can get innovation to pass from its innovative firms to its fringe less innovative firms will no doubt see a positive impact among its wider economy. And let's be clear, we're not stating that the UK is not a home for innovative firms. Far from it, the UK is home to many world-beating innovative firms in the finance, aerospace and pharmaceutical industries, just to name a few. But the issue is that some of the best practices and technologies that are adopted in these leading innovative British firms are not reaching other parts of the private and public sector as quickly as they do in similarly developed nations. This results in a long tail of firms with relatively low levels of productivity. In fact, here's an image of what such a long tail graph would look like. At the left side of this graph, we have the very innovative firms doing their thing, being innovative and few in number. As we move along the graph, we see that the adoption of innovation decreases, and this is actually where the majority of firms will be located, and hence it drags down the UK's national average. Like mentioned before though, this long tail situation is the norm in all economies, not just the UK's. But the issue is the speed at which this innovation is diffused throughout its economy. And at the national level, what drags up a nation's productivity output is its ability to adapt innovations relatively quickly. So there you go. The issues that plague the UK's productivity growth are related to its ability to adopt innovation, as well as the two other areas mentioned in our previous video in this series, its education system and its levels of investment. So what are the solutions? How can the UK solve its productivity puzzle to become a more prosperous nation? Now, there's no silver bullet. No matter whatever anyone tells you, there is not one solution to fixing a problem like poor productivity output. Rather, each solution will contribute to an overall improved outlook for the growth of productivity in a nation, and the UK is no different. So let's have a look at three areas, starting with education. Education on the whole in the UK is pretty good when compared to its peers, but what needs to be introduced is a lifelong upskilling strategy that recognizes the forever and rapidly changing workplace. This strategy should look at supporting current workers, of whom 80% are expected to still be working in 10 years' time, to acquire new skills throughout their career. But which skills, I hear you ask? Well, primarily digital skills, but also other core skills like leadership, project management and complex information processing skills. An upskilling strategy will allow the UK, like many similarly developed nations, to make the most of technologies such as artificial intelligence, which is set to transform the workplace over the coming decades, and an adaptable workforce will be well positioned to reap the benefits of these technologies and allow for the diffusion of innovation to happen at a faster rate throughout the economy. But beyond the employee acquiring further skills through a publicly or privately launched initiative, 
it is also the work of the firms themselves to upskill. Companies should be incentivized to invest in digital infrastructure and make greater use of their own company data to improve management practices. This would allow them to bring their product or service to market more effectively, as well as adopt any new business models that arise more quickly, making them more agile and responsive to changes in their respective markets. This would support the push to enable the diffusion of innovation in the economy, as well as improve the rates of investment seen by companies across the UK, therefore tackling two issues that hold back the UK's productivity. And, as for the third solution, and perhaps the most important, a better investment environment is needed. The UK government needs to invest as well as incentivize investing among firms and households. This could be done through modern infrastructure projects, like Crossrail in London or HS2, the controversial high-speed railway under construction that aims to further link the UK and create more rail capacity. These are steps in the right direction. Such infrastructure along with a financial system which supports private investment by firms of all sizes, not just the large multinational British firms, could also greatly improve the UK's national productivity output levels. And enabling all parts of the UK and not just London and the South East to benefit from these productivity pushing policies will support long-term productivity growth at a national level. So. These three areas should be part of a horizontal strategy from the British government and businesses that aim to reduce or even completely close the productivity gap between the UK and other developed nations. So there you go, the UK's productivity puzzle summed up. Well, not quite. We've deliberately left out one final aspect of the puzzle that we only just touched on in this video, and we will discuss in a future video that looks at the regional divide between London and the rest of the UK. If you'd like me to make a video about that, then let me know by hitting that like button. With regards to the solutions proposed in this video though, I'd expect that the UK will be able to address in some capacity the productivity gap that currently faces it. But I also think that demand for the skills that will allow for the UK to be productive will outpace the supply of labour with these skills, and therefore the UK may just look to import people with these skills to help improve its productivity performance. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, rather it's just an approach I think the UK will take to ensure that it solves its productivity puzzle. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. I'd like to hear what solutions you think the UK should take in order to fall more in line with the more productive European and American workers. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and take care. Bye!